What's good, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Full Circle. I'm your host, as always, Ola Harmon Jr. Please, please, please feel free to follow me at Ola Harmon Jr. on all your favorite social media sites. You know the drill, people. And guess what? We're finally posting TikTok. So, yeah, you know, do some dance challenges with me or something. I don't know. Whatever you young kids are into. But, as always, we have another great show for you this week. And we have a new guest to the show making his debut, one of my old-time journalism friends, good friend, great guy. We have Tyler Chansey joining us to the show today. Woo! How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm feeling hyped up. Thank you so much for having me on. Always, always. It's been a long time coming. And Tyler, just in case people don't know, who are you and what do you do? Well, you did well. You did say we have rubbed shoulders before, but yes, I used to um, uh, write, write quite a bit for uh, the Game Fanatics, uh, the, the GameFanatics dot com. That's where Odell and I uh, kind of uh, met and uh, did a bit of the journalism before. Uh, brief, brief shout out to Mister Charles Powers and his wife Bridget for keeping that site going and promoting and promoting a new platform for for, for voices in the industry. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And uh, but, uh, but other than that, I've still been um, a, a doing the journalism thing, you know, letting my uh, le- le- letting my opinion and my thoughts on the industry, current events, and gaming as an artistic medium, as well as new modern entertainment, sing across the interwebs, and I'm still doing that at TechRaptor.net. And uh, I am very slowly returning to the world of Twitch streaming, reviving my pile of shame or my backlog if you prefer if you prefer streaming as of right now friday afternoons at 3 p.m eastern standard time my twitch channel is uh, digi desperado 26 capitalize the d's all one word and just recently i finished the remake of demon souls on playstation 5 as for stuff going forward i uh, will see so stay tuned there I'm also very a- very active on Twitter. You can follow me there at Darth Rahu, R A H U, capital D, capital R, all one word. Well, well, well. There's a quite an impressive stacked credentials you got there, sir. And I must say, you know, I really want to jump into the remake of Demon Souls because I guess this is the time to do it. I've never been, you know, uh, a Souls fan, Souls born, as I guess the genre is called now, you know, your Sekiro's, your Demon Souls, your Bloodborne's, they've just never been for me, so I'm thinking I'm going to take the plunge because the Demon Souls remake looks amazing, and I guess I just want to at least beat one of those titles from that genre at some point in my life to say that I did, I, I, you know, the soul-crushing difficulty, I feel like I've beaten hard games in my life, and this is just another form of a challenging title but we'll see i I don't know i don't know i would definitely say uh the remake of demon souls would be a good place to get into because um i i kind of mentioned this before when i was talking during my streams of the game the remake they added a lot of small quality of life stuff that really makes the experience flow a lot better and much more accessible compared to the original which was very much a rough draft what would become the much more popular Dark Souls series because there's a lot of stuff in there that I cannot go back to anymore, which is why I struggled so much with finishing the original. So the remake was my opportunity to kind of put that particular black spot to bed. But if you're just new coming into the Soulsborne series, it's it's a pretty good place to start. All right, all right. I'll 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 definitely do that. And, you know, I probably won't stream it because I don't want people to see my frustration of getting dominated so horribly for so long. <laughs> but but I digress because to this week we're talking about actually some pretty unique things. And I have to say, people, for once, we're not talking about Nintendo. Ah, ha, ha, I got you because we are talking about Nintendo, kind of. <laughs> it, they, they're, they're always doing something. They're not, there's people that's like... Is this a Nintendo podcast? No, but Nintendo always does stuff, so I, I don't know what to tell you. Tell, go, 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 go to, I don't know, Kyoto and Nintendo's headquarters and shake up Miyamoto and tell him to quiet down with their stuff. <laughs> but this week, we're going to be talking about The Last of Us TV show. We finally got some details 
about what it is and is not going to be about. And it is interesting because you'll, you'll see, you'll see. But before that, we're going to be talking about Square Enix Presents Recap. Yes, you heard me right. Square Enix Presents is the first one of a two-parter, which we're supposed to be getting another one pretty soon. But we're going to be talking about that and, you know, the deconstruction of E3 and major game shows with everyone having their own, you know, mini presents, directs, conferences, state of play, whatever you want to call them nowadays. But before that, yeah, we're going we're gonna to kick it off with some Nintendo news because guess what, people? Animal Crossing is one year old. One years old? You know, is, are you supposed to put the S when you say one year old? Or one I'm, old? I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't. It's just right. one year old. It makes sense. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Associated Press. One year old in at the time of you listening to this. And it's crazy to think because this game will forever be synonymous with the pandemic, I believe. I don't I don't think there'll ever be a conversation about Animal Crossing New Horizons that isn't tied with the pandemic. And yeah, so you know, and the pandemic is kinda winding down. At least people people are hoping it's winding down. Who who knows at this point? But finger crossed. Yeah. You know, we have a vaccine, thank God, so things hopefully will return to normal. But Tyler, I gotta ask you, we had a year of the pandemic and a year of Animal Crossing. Did you did you get the game? Um I can, I can say I did not pick up a copy of New Horizons, but when it came out, um, um, what happened with my roommate at the time was so indicative of the feeling at the time, because it was back in March. Yes, of course, doy, one year ago. What am I talking about? <laughs> and, and, and around the time, this is around the time, you know, people weren't really, people still weren't really clear on how big uh, the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic was going to be. So when it came to the release of New Horizons, everybody was making all the cute fan art and crossover stuff with Isabel from Animal Crossing with uh, with Doom Guy because Doom Eternal was coming out the same day. And I distinctly remember, uh, day of launch, I downloaded Doom Eternal on my PS4 and my roommate picked up Animal Crossing New Horizons. And... And that was basically what happened. Like, we, we, we come back from work, we'd sit down, and we basically played out the meme. Like, long form. <laughs> he, he's, he's there on his island, you, 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 know, you know, picking fruit, you know, fishing, you know, getting fossils, trying to get the museum built, and, you know, trying to pay off his stuff to Tom Nook. And meanwhile, I'm, you know, basically in the same room, headphones on, you know, jamming out to Mick Gordon's metal while just ripping demons in half. And every now and then, I'll just take it off and see it and be like, how's it going? It's very nice. It's very peaceful. How's it going? Awesome. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it just kind of kept going like that until, you know, eventually, I, you know, I got to the end, beat the game. And then, curiously, then, you know, the pandemic got a lot more serious and, you know, became, became a lot more ins insular, you know, much more quarantine. And... As you said, the narrative is now inextricably tied to the pandemic because her New Horizons really helped fill in a very crucial gap to the human experience. Just being able to just, you know, be outside and meet with people and accessorize and just have, you know, the sort of social experiences we came to crave and were kind of wanting for because of the situation. Oh man, you said that beautifully. I, I like the living off the meme that 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 can <laughs> Doom Guy and Isabella. You know, for me, it was interesting because personally, I'm not a fan of slice of life gaming. You know, i.e., you know, your Sims, Farmville, Stardew Valley. Um, I have I I don't think I don't have a problem with the games themselves. I think they're wonderful. It's just you know, I've never been one to do the let me play a game where you know I wake up have limited time to do errands, go to sleep, rinse like a repeat. Because, you know, life is already that. And I don't I don't want a miniature version of that to, to, like, you know, take up the time where I'm not already doing that. But with that said, Animal Crossing's New Horizons seemed cool. And I was like, all right, you know, I didn't get New Leaf because, you know, if you remember when New Leaf came out, people were like, oh, New Leaf. And uh, I remember one of the new Assassin's Creed had just came out around the same time New Leaf came out. And then, like, um, and, like, I think they had the same initials. It was, like, you know, AC, 
NL, and I, I forgot what the, the Assassin's Creed at the time was, but the narrative was every time when someone said AC, blah, 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 they would meant Animal Crossing New Leaf. And I, and I remember thinking, <laughs> I'm not going to jump on this bandwagon. You know, graphically, it looks okay. And it looks, it still had the old school, like Nintendo 64 looking Animal Crossing style. And that was just a turn off for me. But with New Horizons, you know, it looked crisp. I like the island concept. I already had like five friends who were like, I'm getting this day one. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll bite. And I'm not going to lie to you, Tyler. That Animal Crossing New Horizons Switch. Mwah. Like, oh. uh, it was a thing of beauty. It it was hard to ignore. I, I may have bought one. <laughs> I, I I will leave that up to the court to decide. I plead the fifth. I will not say what I did or did not do. Hey, I'm not I'm not gonna judge. I mean, the only time I've ever in my life actually went out of my way to pick up a special branded like console that released with a game was this is gonna make me feel so old now when i say it so or at the very least very much set in my ways it was that special exclusive edition legend of zelda themed wii u that came with the box copy of the of wind waker hd it was all black it had like the gold gloss and the triforce on, on the gamepad and i'm like yeah i'm going to enjoy this and then well you know it was the wii u <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. I, I, mean I, I, I love that machine to death. It had some really good games on it. It just no as as hardware. Like that was the biggest fault of that platform. Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, we all see it for what it is now, which was just an, an experimental step to see how well the Switch could perform eventually. Yeah, it was very much a stopgap, and I'm, uh, it's also kind of uh, reaff reaffirming because a lot of the good stuff that's not coming out for the Switch was stuff that was on the Wii U, but. No one played yeah. it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, it, it is funny you did bring up um, uh, Animal Crossing um, uh, New Leaf because I that was actually my second introduction to uh, Animal Crossing. Like, I thought to myself, okay, it's handheld, it's on the 3DS, it's something I could just, you know, open up and, you know, play every now and then, and... I cannot. I don't have any direct comparisons to New Horizons, but it really is just a very pleasant experience. Like it, you just feel nice. It's just mellow. It, it's like you're just sinking into a hot bath, a very, very expensive, you know, scented herbal bath, and you're just this is nice. <laughs> oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, as I was playing it, you know, so my goal was uh, okay. I'm gonna play this game and get to. The where you can like you know edit your island because I remember people were creating amazing like recreations of things and I was like, dear God, I'm never gonna have the time and day, but I'll do a little something. And so I was playing it. I had a two two friends who we had like a like a you know a little a circle of like you know going to each other's islands, trading, doing things, going to each other's shops, and you know we pretty much did this every day consistently for maybe. I will say a good half a year, a good six months from the game coming out. And I don't know if that if that was due to the pandemic or us just being cool, you know, probably a little bit of both. <laughs> and Animal Crossing became part of my daily routine, literally my daily routine, like, you know, get home from work, which eventually turned into, you know, work is over, more or less. <laughs> and, then, yeah. you know. We would text. We had a we had a group text, and we'd be like, "Hey, when are you getting on?" Like, oh, "I'm getting on at like six or seven. And you know, we'll all be on. Go do our stuff. Go to each other's islands, and you know, try to get cool clothes. And it and it hooked me. I'm not gonna lie. I did get to a point where I, I you know I beat the game. You know, so to speak. You know, I got KK to come to the island. The credits roll. And then I you know I got the creation tools. And then I realized, dear God, I suck at this. I cannot make a beautiful what is in my mind cannot be transcribed onto my island i hate <laughs> this why do i suck at this and then, like i go to like reddit and other things and people are like look what i did i'm like good for you good for you i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad you have no life <laughs> it's, 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 it's giving me flashbacks to just how um uh, how insane it was back when minecraft was just coming out and getting super popular and i remember playing that you know kind of make some, some comparisons and in my head i'm like okay i've done a thing where i can basically use water to like give myself like a, a sky fortress that's neat and then i look online and i find that somebody has like recreated the mines of moria from lord of the rings or the starship enterprise and i'm just 
this is nothing. What am I doing? <laughs> I know. It's like, you know, Minecraft is on another level because you can literally create anything. Like, you see people creating, like, the 16th chapel and, like, yeah. full versions of cities. And I'm just like, okay. Okay, no, like... You're, you're transcending good. This isn't a matter of, like, you could give me all the hours of all days and still I could not do this. <laughs> when you have to start actually, like, doing, like, floor plans and actually start, like, rationing out work shifts for what's supposed to be entertainment, I think you might, have, I think you might have be dedicating a little too much time to it. Oh, and uh, since you did say um, New Leaf, um, it kind of kind of messed you up. I did a bit of the Google, and it looks like 2013 Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag was coming in stores. Ah, so, there it is. So A C B F A C N L. I can see all of those those things kind of like blend together. Yeah, it was a it was a crazy time, and oh my god, and, and, and you know I wonder because so. I feel we all know Animal Crossing New Horizon broke records up the wazoo. As you know, a matter of as a matter of fact, it sold better than any of the new installments. Uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf, I uh, believe, uh, according to a, uh, a, 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 a thing I found, yeah. a new leaf. Uh, duh, sorry, word of words, but yeah, New Leaf sold about twelve point eight two million copies. That's that was the highest selling um, uh, um, uh, uh, release. New Horizons. 31.18 million. Oh, yeah, more, I know. More than twice. Yeah, and um, I don't know what... So I know it broke some software records. I don't know if it still holds those. Point is, at the time, it was breaking records left and right. I'm pretty sure it, I'm pretty sure it has to be the holder of at least one of those records still to this date. Oh. And um, I know part of that is due to the pandemic, like, mo no doubt. Oh, but yeah. I wonder how good it would have been without it because I still feel like even before the game dropped, there was a lot of hype behind this game. I don't know why that was because a lot of people, you know, it's, there's always those one games in a series that people will rush out to buy without having, without having played their original titles. Mm -hmm. Like, for, for example, Super Smash Bros. Melee sold so many copies and I'm pretty sure so many of those people never even touched the 64 version. It was just like, you know, one of those cultural phenomenon things. I mean, you know, of course, you know, but I find it crazy that because of the pandemic, that it wasn't that it sold so well. It was that it increased sales of the Switch. People literally went to go buy a console that had already been out for well over a year to play this game. And that just blows my mind. Because <laughs> that, that's such an upsell. It's like... Hey, this game, Animal Crossing, all the news outlets are talking about it, all the late night hosts. I don't know if you saw the jokes, but, you know, they were never oh, in yeah. And oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, pr President Biden had his own um, uh, Animal Crossing um, uh, 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 island, and he was promoting and showing it off. Oh, yeah, that's right. The whole tour. You know, we had a talk show by Gary Witta. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, people literally like, oh, crap, I want to be on this. Okay, I got the game 60 bucks. Cool. I don't have a Switch. $250? All right, yeah, I got that. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, the, if you told me to experience this phenomenon, I had to go drop, you know, let's say after tax, close to $400, I'd probably have been all right. I would have missed that fad. <laughs> but kudos it, it, to all you people out there. It was also very quintessentially uh, a Nintendo move, for lack of a better term, when it comes to the overall market. Because as I said before, the big release er across other platforms was Doom Eternal. You know, big, meaty, infamature, hyper-violent action game. And, and then you have the underpowered Switch in this, effectively, this very mellow sim. And it dominates the landscape by its... Kind of by being its own thing. Once again, the pandemic is a factor, but it, it just highlighted Nintendo's uh, Nintendo's overall business practice of not always going for the easy gen uh, the easy general mainstream audience of, of 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 gamers hashtag gamers trademark gamers whatever you want to call it because they keep aiming for you know more general for more general inclusivity with kids or maybe some maybe somebody who would be much more at home. Just wanting to, you know, accessorize the, uh, a fictional house or something. Yeah, and you know, I will say to its credit, you know, a year later, you know, Animal Crossing is still going strong with its, you know, its DLC, its um, mm -hmm. timed events. Uh, most recently, I know they had um, 
Carnival, and now they've had like the Mushroom Kingdom expansion with the items and clothings. And you know, I think it's just cool that the community has stayed strong. You know, clearly, you know, it's not topping the charts. You know, we've had releases of the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X. You know, we're all about, you know, next gen, which are, I don't know. Are we are we far along into next gen to, for it to just be the current gen yet? I'm so confused it, on that when I say it. I'm like, am, am it I supposed weird. to say next gen? It is weird because it should be next gen, but because of, once again, the pandemic, a lot of releases that are supposed to be the sort of meant to be sort of the pivoting you know point of the of the culture have are being delayed and have oh. been and have been delayed so the new consoles have been out but there hasn't really been that one killer rap that says this is the new standard yet yeah you know oh speaking of gotham knights got delayed until 20 2022 2022 you know, <laughs> you know I, the, the years have gotten to those futuristic levels where i'm like it is 2021 and next year is 2022. And two years from now is 2023. I'm just like, man, where are the flying cars? But <laughs> where, where, where are the flying cars? Where, where, where's my electric car? And where is my cybernetic implants? Exactly. But yeah, Gotham Knights was delayed. So I'm like, oh, no. So, you know, I get it. No, no one wants to have a cyberpunk situation. No, that, no one wants to have that. And I don't wish that on any, you know, developer, but it's just like, oh, God, you know, you know, as long as I get Ratchet and Clank this year, I'll be fine. You can delay Horizon. You can delay God of War. I'll live. You know, Gotham Knights is already delayed. I'm like, that's cool. You know, I can I can live with my Final Fantasy uh, retrograde, renegade, intrograde, third grade, wherever it's called. Three, five, eight over two days. <laughs> 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 you know, and then I'll have my ratchet. You know, uh, I haven't played Crash Four yet, so I'll have time to do that. You know, I'll, I'll knock out some backlog, so I don't, I don't need every great thing under the golden sun to come out. So I'm cool with the 2021. Ugh, there we go, the 2022 release dates. I actually, I actually haven't even beat the first Horizon. Like that was the game, like I played, put down, and had to pick up again, and forgot how to play, and then I just. Never went back to it, so I got to do that before the next one comes out anyway. Hey, hey, don't feel bad. That's on my backlog as well. I I know it's good. I, I've heard people tell me it's good. I played the first 10 minutes of it, and I'm like, this is really good. It's just, you know, I got to get to the credits now. <laughs> and, um, you know, another game that's actually out and um, still doing its thing, and a lot of people want it to succeed, and unfortunately it hasn't, is, you know, Marvel's Avengers which is always a weird game for me to say because I'm like Marvel's Avengers, not Marvel's Avengers, the movie or any of the movies, but Marvel Avengers, the video game, not Marvel's Avengers, the video game, because that's actually also a video game. This is a video game just called Marvel's Avengers that came out recently. Oh. <laughs> I, I really, it needed a subtitle. <laughs> That is never a good sign when your when the, your game's very title confuses your core market. Yes, yeah, so I'm like I'm like why don't they call it Marvel's Adventures the video game? Oh, there is a Marvel's Adventures the video game that came out like a while back. Why don't they, like they just should call it like Marvel's Adventures colon a title, and, and there we go, confusion over. But you know what? <laughs> You know what? It's going to be okay because when the new Switch comes out, it's either going to be called the new Switch or the next Switch. And, you know, hey, you know, I, who, who cares? P PlayStation, thank you. Thank you for always using a simple numbering system. I don't think PlayStation gets enough credit for that. I'm, it, I, I, it's, very, it's very utilitarian, but you know what it is. <laughs> yes. Yes, no, no. Oh, I, I remember it was the article uh, when the Series X and Series S came out. So that this past Christmas cycle, there was a huge uptick on Xbox. Um, crap, not one Series. X, yeah, Xbox One X. What was the last Xbox that came out before the Series X? Xbox oh, 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 One X, right? Yeah, it was the Xbox One X. It was Xbox One, then they did the, the, the sort of incremental one, Xbox One X, sort of like the PS4 Pro, and they had the more economical Xbox One S. 
And then for the next gen, Xbox Series X and then Xbox Series S, kind of doing that same, you know, more powerful or more affordable market they're doing. Yeah, there you go. There was a huge uptick of Xbox One X sales between November and December. And I was like, we all knew it. Those were <laughs> kids who wanted a Series X and they're about to open a One X for Christmas. And we will all laugh. Not maybe not at the time, but later. <laughs> So uh, uh, for all for all of Microsoft's for all of Microsoft's stuff, you know, the good stuff that they've been doing with you know with Game Pass, everything else. I want to know who is making the calls for naming these machines because why they used to work at Nintendo, probably that that was my only guess. <laughs> that 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 is, that is not a shot at Nintendo. It it was just. Very Nintendo-like to name a console series like that. But I digress, because uh, Marvel's Avengers, speaking of that, that was actually part of the Square Enix Presents presentation that we got. And Segway! Yeah! You know how we do it here. And uh, one of the announcements was the Avengers, you know, we're getting the introduction of Hawkeye, and we're getting the Black Panther uh, War for Wakanda expansion. And, you know, that's that's cool stuff, because... You know, I didn't play this game. I didn't. I'm not gonna say my gut told me it was gonna be bad, but I knew it wasn't going to be what people wanted it to be. You know, I was I, like, "This is Destiny with superheroes, but a lot more grindy," and that's what we got. Make sure to check out Becky. The explosive new horror comic is coming soon. Shay is a woman who thought she had it all: a black man to build a black family and a black life until the night the demon in disguise returned. Is Shay the one to finally stop Becky? Join our email list today at www.gogetbecky.com. Get exclusive behind the scenes content when you sign up. Once again, that's www.gogetbecky.com. I, I, I feel almost kind of vindicated because I remember way back when I was at the Game Fanatics, when Marvel's Avengers and everything else was still first announced, I wrote an op-ed titled Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is the real Avengers game we need. Like, that was basically the pitch. And I can't, I don't want to say I told you so, but it feels kind of weird now because people kind of forgot about Ultimate Alliance 3. It was Switch exclusive and all the, and they thought, oh, that's just going to be a mindless beat-em-up where you can, where up to four people could play as marvel superheroes and fight baddies and you know it's not going to be as good because we you know we got marvel's avengers to look forward to which turned out to be a very expensive very fancy looking mindless beat-em-up where you and three other people can control a superhero and beat up a bunch of guys but the difference is that with ultimate alliance 3 you fought different types of heroes there was like 40 or 50 available characters to start there was one season pass and all the characters were there and felt distinct. Then you get to, like, you know, they, they, they compare it to Square Enix's Avengers, and you have maybe six playable heroes, I think, at, at, at launch that kind of look like off-brand stunt models of the, of the characters that they want to invoke, and it's so repetitive and whatever, but you're fighting robots and MODOK. Like, apparently he's supposed to be the big, evil, big bad. Like, it's either MODOK or Thanos, I'll take Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will commend them for, you know, being like, hey, here's another big bag from the universe. Here's a new story. You know, we're not going to just, you know, remake the movie. So I I'll give them that. I will I will give them that for, for trying. And I do appreciate, like, I'm kind of the same boat as you, Odell, because I didn't pick up Avengers because I was confused as to what it was trying to be. Because... It looked like it was going to be a narrative-focused, you know, action brawler, kind of like um, uh, Crystal Dynamics' work on uh, the more recent Tomb Raider games. And the whole thing framed it as a sort of origin story for Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel, where she helps the Avengers get their groove back to fight, you know, MODOK. And I'm like, okay, I'm on, I'm aboard with that. But then, as you said, it also tries to be Destiny, so it throws in a bunch of really grindy, repetitive stuff, a bunch of side mission stuff, a bunch of you know, cosmetic stuff you can grind for and an online element. And I'm like, these do not gel. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, you actually just gave me the greatest mock title. Marvel's Avengers. Get your groove back. <laughs> Avengers new groove. 
Avengers New Groove. But the, the problem is, though, is that once again, in the back of my mind, I'm, I keep thinking, okay, they're adding all these new heroes, they're adding all this content, and they're trying to prop this up. But then I look over to my Switch with my copy of Ultimate Alliance 3, and I'm like, I could just go back and play this, you know? I, you know, I don't need to wait for, you know, Black Panther and, and, and the War for Wakanda. I can just go to the chapter where you help, you know, Black Panther and the Dora Milaje fight off, you know, evil in Wakanda and just play as Black Panther. <laughs> I mean, you, you were correct. But, you know, <laughs> moving on to the other games and the, the, the presents, you know, we just mentioned this. We did get the 25th, anniver- uh, the 25th anniversary, you know, remake edition of Tomb Raider mm-hmm. that, you know, we get the, the Tomb Raider um, Survivor trilogy along with the original Tomb Raider, I believe. Or, But what I found interesting about this was we recently just got a remake of those games and now we just got a repackaging of those games for the 25th anniversary and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not going to knock it because everyone's been doing that. A lot of games are turning 25, 30, 31, you know. Everyone's hitting the big five or zero, you know, in these coming years. So that's cool. I thought that was interesting to um, to do that. I would have I would have went for a remake of the original uh, Angelina Jolie, Laura Croft, if you will, mm. instead of our <laughs> repackaging of our remake you've already did. But, hey, you know what? Not going to knock it. Because those things sell like hotcakes. But on the other hand, it wasn't just that. they It, it felt kind of chintzy in a weird way because it wasn't just those remasters. They also announced a bunch of like Tomb Raider themed like uh, merchandise and apparently uh, a Fortnite crossover because everything has a Fortnite crossover now. Oh, man, you know, you're, you're not nobody until you're in Fortnite. Yay. You know, it it's it, I always tell people Fortnite is not a video game, it is a cultural experience at this point. <laughs> if, if, I, I love how you say that. I'm more cynical of it. I kind of feel like Fortnite's become more more of a marketing exercise now because every time I think of Fortnite now, I just think of a xenomorph flossing. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for bringing some color to this. Yeah, you know, I, I I try to have a positive spin on things. There's a lot of things I am negative about on the show or people will perceive as negativity. So I try to always always add some cheer in here. Uh, you know, we also got the Square Enix Presents mobile games, which, you know, I'm not going to lie. We got the, the Hitman Sniper, just, just Cause Mobile. That was a big surprise for me. Didn't see that one coming. The new Pokemon Go style Space Invaders. Which I I don't know how that's gonna work, but hey, you know, ever since Pokemon Go did its thing, you know, everyone's been trying to you know replicate that magic, mm-hmm. if you will, in some way, shape, or form. But you know, mobile games are just a force to be reckoned with. Long, like you know, there was always the the narrative that is it real gaming, and now that question doesn't even need to be asked anymore. I feel like it it just is. It's just another part of gaming. It's yeah. it's it, it, it reminds me of how people thought you know if VR gaming caught on, it would be the new standard, and console and PC gaming would go away. And I'm like, no, it's just another facet of it. You know, D- you know, it doesn't have to be end all, be all, zero sum. Yeah, and uh, the thing I found fascinating because I was I was the snob, you know, the gatekeeper, if you will. Shame on me. That was like, oh, mobile games aren't real games. Which I mean, keep in mind, people. I I grew up before cell phones existed, like to the common man. So you know, I got to see the evolution of Snake, Bejeweled, you know, Farmville, and you know, you know basically point and click games to like cut the rope, doodle jump. You know, Angry Birds before it, that was a cultural phenomenon, and then and then you know, Infinity Blade and Dark Meadow started hitting, and oh, yeah, and then you know, and then we started to get you know what I would consider real games on the on the on your phone, like um, uh, I remember when Bastion first came to phones, I, that blew me away. I thought like I would never see something like that. Really, all of Super Giants games, and then um, oh dear, oh dear God, they put Hades on mobile. The world would end. <laughs> yeah, and then um, you start to see things like um, like more licensing games, like a lot of Disney games and stuff like that. And then you know now we're at a point where you know you have like Genshin Impact, which 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 you I would consider like a full fledged functioning game, and most of its user base is on mobile. And you know just 
it's it's particularly telling because it released also on PS4 and Switch. And if you didn't know that game was also on phones and dom and was dominantly meant for mobile phones, you never would have guessed. Never. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know the C Square, you know, you know, continuing this trend with with what you know, like you said, if you would see this game running and no one told you what was on, you wouldn't guess that it was. A either game optimized for mobile or where it, most of its user base was on mobile. So that's I'm I'm interested to see that going forward. How like you know companies will handle that. Like you know I, I'm assuming they'll get to a point where like each company will always have like during their big presentations a section you know 10 to 15 minutes dedicated to what's new coming in their mobile sphere or you know whatever they would consider that corner of the market if it needs a fancy name. Mm. I, I, I will admit I, I still have a bit of uh, bias, I guess you could say, because I'm in the same boat as you, where I'm still of the mind of, that's nice for people who played there, but I have to have a controller in my hands if I'm going to be gaming. So that's more of a me problem more than anything else. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, especially with the introduction of the Switch, it's like, okay, if I'm going to game on the go, that's how I'm going to do it. Me mm-hmm. personally. And I guess this... This isn't really a shot against, you know, mobile games, but I use my phone for so much that I feel like I can never play a game seriously on my phone with calls, texts, emails, what have you constantly coming through. Like, I couldn't be playing, like, you know, a a good mobile game and then, like, oh, I got to answer this call. Oh, like, I need to answer this message or, oh, you know, and then I I would probably get to a point where, like, okay, I'm not playing this game anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, ju- just to go through these next ones really quickly, the the big ones at least we got some indie titles of, uh, but some of the big things we got Outriders, which Outriders is a funny game to me because you know it's coming out. There's always good big AAA games, if you will, that have mm-hmm. hype around it that I'll never understand. Like Outriders was announced a while back, and people are like, "Oh, I'm waiting for it." I'm like, "Are we? Are we <laughs> waiting for Outriders?" <laughs> Are, am I anticipating this? What, what is Outriders outside of the name? But, you know, we finally got a gameplay overview trailer. And I'm like, is this the first one? Because I swear up until right now, I never knew what this game was even about. It was just like... I, um, <laughs> oh, uh, apologies. Oh, no, go I, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the game actually kind of won me over because um, they released a demo. And I did give, give it a chance. And after a while of spending some time with Outriders, which I think I think there's, there is kind of a problem where you look at just just footage of it, and and everybody else has the same reaction as you, where it's like, what in the world is this? Just this just looks like a generic, you know, shooter. And my answer is, yeah. <laughs> I, that sounds really mean because um, uh, People Can Fly is, uh, is working on it. Um, you might know them more from uh, Bullet Storm and Gears of War Judgment. And in the back of my head, I was playing it and I realized, okay, this game is not trying to be a live service game like Destiny. It's just trying to be its kind of own energized take on like the old mid 2000s, late 2000s th- third person shooter. And I'm like, there's that's fine, but. I think it's very telling that it's on Game Pass. It's going to be on Game Pass for Xbox platforms, which is, which is where I think a lot of its longevity is going to be because it's for a very specific sort of, I guess you can say, nostalgic market for it, where it's just an action game that has some online tacked on and it isn't trying to be the next big online game that's going to become, you know, a second job for 10 years, <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. You know, I wish it success. You know, every, you know, yeah. there's all these games are a labor of love to someone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like I said, the, I'm not knocking the game for anything. But there's always those games. I can't think of one right now. There, are, they're, they're, they're always every so often. They're like, it's a big game. You know, it's coming out. But I'm always just like, w- w- it, it just, it just, it just, it's like whispers in the void. And then it'll be like, <laughs> I'm here. And it's like, oh, you're here. Should, should I be playing? It, am I? Am I? You know. And that's that's Outriders for me right now. I'm just like, okay. Oh, you know what's the last game I can vividly remember uh, that did that? No Man's Sky. It was like, No Man's Sky is about to come out. Have you not been following this development? I'm like, what is No Man's Sky? Why are we all not talking about it? Should I be excited? What is this? The answer was no. The answer was no. I went out and the answer might be yes now, but at the time it came out, it was definitely a no. It was definitely hard to really. <laughs> no Man's Sky was the kind of game it was very hard. 
because it's not really a spectacle or a spectator experience. It's and you know it wasn't fully complete yet. <clears throat> Yeah, like, no, literally, me and my friend both got it day one, and we tried to see if, like, we could find each other in the universe. The answer was no. And um, <laughs> and I remember I played it for, like, a good week and just never had any idea what the hell I was doing at any given moment. Like, no. Thank, thank goodness it's substantially better now, but at launch, ugh. Yeah, and I feel like that, that, that's going to be Outriders if I was to get it. It'd be like, what do I do now? Shoot this, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we got a new Life is Strange, True Colors is the uh, title, which a lot of people were expecting and, and you know clamoring for. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, uh, I played half of the first Life is Strange because at that point I was kind of okay. I know it's not by Telltale, but I was the Telltale Walking Dead formula out. So I played like the first two chapters and I literally was just like, all right, I'm going to have to watch the next chapters if someone's played through because like, I'm not saying the story wasn't good. And I will give it this life is strange actually mixed the formula up of how, you know, you walk through the world and interact with things like it was a more fluid experience. So I did enjoy that. It but also, I, oh, sorry, go on. I know. Yeah. It was a more fluid experience. I didn't, but I was just fatigued of the genre is why I ultimately didn't finish it. I can agree with that because I was kind of in the same boat with you. Um, I finished. I actually finished the first Life is Strange, and I was really sick of Telltale's formula. But I was able to recognize that the studio behind Life is Strange was actually doing some very good creative um, uh, choices with it, like actually remembering more substantive choices you made and actually having them, you know, pay off later on, rather than that whole. You know, blank will remember that illusion of choice that Telltale really, really got uh, very prolific with with some of their other stuff. And it is particularly telling that True Colors is going to be a complete experience at launch. Like, it's not oh, going to yeah, be. That a was a godsend. When they said that, I was like, okay, yes, we need to do this going forward. Uh, I, I bring that up because this is something I, I, I'm going to have to, like, you know, get on my soapbox a little bit because. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed Life is Strange 2, and I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the experience that that game had with uh, the two brothers, because it was from a very different perspective, it was from a very different sort sort of um, uh, way. It, it told a story that's very kind of tricky to do in modern gaming, but a lot of the discussion around it was heavily truncated because, those, because the episodic release format had to be that they were not releasing really all together it was like maybe a month and a half apart and because of that people's interest solely dropped and people stopped caring because you know you know we are this is an industry of trends so of course things are going to pop up you know and the discussion is going to be carried elsewhere and meanwhile i'm here finishing life is strange to start to finish you know like you know i'm writing up stuff as as every episode releases and i'm like why aren't more people talking about this oh it wasn't all put together oh <laughs> Yeah, and um, so you know, I'm I'm just gonna say this. I think episodic gaming is not dead, but I think it should die. Like it 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 was cool at first, you know, it was new and exciting, and it had like that TV feel of like, oh, I'm waiting, I'm anticipating. But you know, the more and more they kept doing it, and I'm not saying that the game's quality waned, but definitely that that experience did it wasn't something that was captivating it became more of a chore you know and the second something becomes a chore you know you got to find something else so I, I i know um i know um the same studio tried to compress that bit with tell me why and when that released they tried having like they release an episode then a week another episode comes out trying to make it imitate uh, prestige television a little bit more but even then that was mm. so yeah i'm right there with you yeah, so um, we'll, we'll get the full game, and you know she has the power of empathy. I believe I'm not sure how that works, yeah. um, like gameplay wise, but you know I'm sure it'll be. And you know just to wrap this up really quickly, we got what I considered personally our first look of what next gen, current gen is capable of with uh, Forspoken. So you know we got it's um you know we got some cool introduction of the actress playing our main uh, character, and 
you know, we got some, uh, she's a regular girl thrown into a fantasy world, as I believe, you know, the tagline. You know, a dragon comes, and she's like, holy crap, it's a dragon. And, then, mm-hmm. you know, we get some story bits, and then, and then, you know, it's all good. And then we see some gameplay. And my goodness, you know, the smooth 60 frames per second, how she's interacting with the world, how the world's interacting with her. And I'm like, yes, yes. Yes, I don't care if this game is bad. It is a step forward, and that is what you want from your new current generation in games. So I don't really care if Forspoken Story sucks. I don't care if ultimately the game isn't all of that. I'm just, I'm just here for the gameplay and seeing, just having the idea of what we're capable of just got me excited for that. Oh my gosh. When I saw you know, the fluidity of all that movie, I could almost feel the feedback I could probably get from my dual sense. It's like moving the terrain. And I'm like, if they get the game feel that right, I really, I'm right there with you. Like, get the game feel right, get that primary loop right, get that gameplay, get that rush going. And congratulations, you have a genuine, brand new, next gen installment that says this is the new standard. Uh, yeah, per- perfectly agree. Couldn't say more, and I mean, honestly, we can't say more because, I mean, that's all we really got. You know, it was our Project Athia, so I'm always, I am always love when um, a, a unannounced project, you know, we get the first look at it and it actually something decent because I feel most times, me personally, when we have the secret project title and then I get the first look at it, I'm just like, oh, this is, this is what y'all were hush about. Yeah, that, that was, that's, that's something, ain't it? <laughs> so I'm happy this is one of the ones that actually turned out to be like, wow, that's amazing. And, you know, we will see what happens with that. You know, hope, hopefully, you know, when I see things like this, I think about games that died in development. And I'm hoping that um, our current gen is able to bring some of those games back that might have been too ambitious at the time. Cough, cough. Uh, Beyond Getting Evil 2, cough, cough. But I'm not going to get on that rant because I will be here all day. Oh, uh, don't worry. I get the same way about scale bound. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I remember that was a podcast episode where we were talking about like uh, when Xbox was announcing a new Fable and Xbox had all those things they were talking about. And I remember just not literally screaming into the mic, but telling everyone scale bound is not happening. Just accept it. Just let that go. <laughs> it still hurts. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, man. You you, you you can tell me Last of Us, I mean, not Last of Us, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is not happening, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll go cry in the corner, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh but uh, speaking of Last of Us, The Last of Us, it's getting a TV show. It's, it's getting a TV show that's happening. I guess I should say that, because with most gaming TV shows and movies, they feel like, and anime sometimes, like it feels like they're forever filming, in development, whatever the case they're doing. And it's like a decade-long process of, it's still happening, guys. It's still happening. And then it eventually doesn't happen. But this is not the case with The Last of Us TV show. In case, I know this may sound strange, people, but South by Southwest 2021 actually did happen um, mm-hmm. between the uh, March 1st and now. That's in Austin. As a Houston, Texas native, I know it well. Uh, but it happened. They had a digital thing. A lot of a lot. It was funny because South by Southwest is always a show that you know is mainly music, but we always get a lot of big announcements out of it that you wouldn't expect to come out of South by Southwest. It's kind of like a sleeper hit for announcements. And one of it was a uh, Neil Durkman uh, speaking with IGN during the South by Southwest 2021, you know, digital event gave us some insights on the TV show. One, it's happening, still coming to HBO. But the first season will cover the events of the first game. But, Tyler, he said something else. Are you wondering what that might be? I believe I do, but please, don't keep the listeners in suspense. Oh, okay. It will follow the events of the first game, but will greatly deviate from some of those events in pretty significant ways. Which I feel like is a contradicting statement, but I I, I don't know. I'm like, yay, cool, the first game. Yay, not following the first game, but the first game. (laughs) Am I crazy? Does that sound weird? That sounds weird, right? uh, I wouldn't say it sounds weird. (laughs) 
I wouldn't say it sounds weird at all. It's, I, I, oh boy, how to even kind of, where, what are words? I'm sorry. Uh, how, how exactly to even start with this? On the one hand, I'm glad that they are using the, the, the plot of the first, the, of the first game as the basis. On the other hand, adaptations have to pick and choose their battles and, Okay, speaking of somebody who actually really enjoyed the first, uh, uh, The Last of Us Part 1, if you adapt this into a TV show and adapt it one-to-one, it's just going to be another story about surviving effectively a zombie apocalypse in all but name. The Walking Dead has been going on for way too long. They have they that spinoff. The, there's a bunch of other, you know, uh, premium t- uh, TV shows that you know, went out and died on the vine because of just how prolific it is. So the only real stuff that makes The Last of Us stand out is its world building and the unique challenges that come with it being about, you know, a cordyceps fungus as opposed to zombies. So taking the core and going and and branching out, I think, is a smart call because, you know, it'll help. Ho- hopefully it'll help the show have its own identity rather than just looking like an also ran. Yeah, you, know, you, you make a good point. So I'm torn on this because The Last of Us, from a story standpoint, is a phenomenal game. Like, you know, 10 out of 10 on the story front. And, you know, I kind of think of it like manga to anime. You know, the blueprints is right there. I just need you to animate it. But I, in, a, in a weird way, a video game is already animated. So, you know... I guess, in theory, I could go to YouTube and just watch all the cutscenes of the game that already exist. I guess, you know, you, you would want to differenti- differentiate that with real people. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's, you know, it, it could be either or, right? It could be dramatically different and significant ways that are good and dramatically different and significant ways that are bad. But just because, you know, we have people on the project that, you know, worked on the game, I think we'll be okay. These aren't like randos. They're just like, I'm a Hollywood big shot. And, you know. Exactly. Like, um, uh, when I was hearing about some uh, uh, Druckmann talking about how, uh, uh, speaking with, uh, I believe, the showrunner, uh, 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 Craig Mazin, I believe they have as the name to the showrunner for the series. He was talking about how he would look over, like, the scripts and be kind of enamored with how, oh, hey, that bit of dialogue I wrote right there from the games, but then, oh, they changed a bit. So this is very much a hand-in-hand co- co-production. So, yeah, as you said, you know, you know, this isn't a case of Hollywood messing with it. Yeah, so, you know, we should be fine. And then, you know, it'll be cool. And assuming, you know, it succeeds, I'm wondering what, you know, future seasons or future projects will look like. You know, because I'm not going to lie, Sonic the Hedgehog movie made me very optimistic for the future. You know, we have the new Mortal Kombat movie coming out, which actually looks pretty really good. damn good from the trailers. <laughs> I am hype for Mortal Kombat. You know, I, I'm really hoping it's not going to be a case of this is all the good parts of the movie, so we're just getting you to come see it. But uh, I have HBO Max because I already had HBO, and they are just like, here's your free membership. And I was like, all right, that's cool. I guess I guess I'll never let this leave my cable package now, but... You know, um, I'll be very looking, I'll look very forward to that. And, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 uh, teaser trailer dropped. You know, they did everything they needed to do. So I'm really rooting for this because I'm like, if we get good video game content in TV shows and movies, I think it will set a new standard to where people can't get away with just licensing only. They can't be like, oh, it has to be crap because they'll go see it. You know, we, we have a vocal internet now, unlike the 90s. So mm-hmm. I think people are aware, especially, again, once with the Sonic movie, that you just can't turn out crap and expect people to be okay with it. So I'm ready for I The think, Last of Us. I think also the the, form, the changing it to format from a movie to prestige television, I think, might help as well. Because, well, for all of the issues that they kind of hit with the Warcraft movie, it was because they were trying to fit so much establishment and so much world building of them, of that world into a single movie. Whereas with a TV show, you have like six, seven plus hours to kind of spread that out. And I think that may be the key to, you know, doing something like this where you, where you take a world or even something that's very character development, very character focused, like the last of us and letting that, letting that set settle in. Yeah. So 
Yeah. I think it also has the added benefit going forward that people understand zombie stories at this point. They understand, you know, it's not zombies, but for lack of a better word, they're zombies. And, you know, people yeah. get that. So The Last of Us is really going to shine through its story, which it already has a great blueprint for. But, you know, you know, we'll see. But, you know, this is another great week, another great topic. I appreciate you joining me, sir, for everything we talked about. And Tyler, real quick, once again, you know, where can people find you and keep up with your doings? Well, like I said before, I am very active on Twitter. You can follow me at Darth Rahu, uh, capital D, capital R, all one word. And and you can't and you can enjoy me and my kind of mediocre audio and camera setup with, my, with on my Twitch channel at uh, Digi Desperado Two Six All One Word Capital D's. And um, you, and if you wish to read me in a professional context, I do ha- I do have features, reviews, guides. I do a lot of stuff. Now I think about it at uh, TechRaptor.net. <laughs> well, all right, please, people, go follow my boy. Do all that stuff, see all his great content. And, you know, as always, I say, if you got beef, put the biscuit on the patty. You can, you know, reach us on our Twitters. We are not afraid to comment. But, you know, as always, you can follow me at Odo Harmon Jr. and the show at Full Circle Podcast and Full Circle Productions on Patreon. If you want to donate some money like the gracious Gabriel Garcia, Rachel Coleman, Baked Rice, and Ryan Frazier, but as I say every week, like, share, and subscribe is free 99, people. You can do that for free. Just like you listen to the show. So if you want to support, you can do it free of charge while you're listening right now. Like, share, subscribe. Even write a review. That might be asking for a lot because I don't write reviews on stuff. I, I will give it a five star and go about my day. So if you want to do that, you can do that too. <laughs> Not going to complain. But as always, everyone, be blessed and have a great week. We'll see you again next week. Stay awesome, everybody.